Welcome back, Achievers, to your Easy Achievers Game Podcast for the week of April 28th. Ugh. Make it stop, Alex. It's Man. already almost May. Dude, it's nuts. Welcome, Achievers. I'm one of your hosts, Elijah, sitting across from me digitally, of course, as always. Alex. Hello, everyone. How are you? I am doing... S- oh. I, w- I was trying to find like, a good word. Okay. I was. I don't want to give the same word every after, week. But I, yeah, every week. So yeah. I, so I you're like, looking at something. Else. Something else. You you need to have a like a cinnamon. Cinnamon. Jesus. Cinnamon. Cinnamon. Hey, I want cinnamon. some cinnamon. Like a some sort of word board mm-hmm. on your uh, computer. You could have like something up. It's like what's what's what's. All right. Good. All right. And it's gonna be like. Uh, fantastic or or incredible you know there's gonna be a bunch of you just say a different one every week hmm i am gracious i'll say that okay <laughs> all right i don't, I don't know, know. I don't do. thank you so much for clicking on this episode of the easy cheers gone pass if this is your first time we come to you every single friday with a couple of news stories that we think you should know about and we talk about it Thank you so much for joining us today. Remember, you can support us if you're on YouTube right now via free feeds. You can like, comment, subscribe. You can hit the notification bell if you'd like to be notified of our videos. If you're on a podcast service of your choice, remember you can five-star review. Five-star review. So if you're on Spotify or Apple Podcast, Pocket Cast, any of the popular podcast streaming services, remember, throw us a five-star review. That helps us a lot with the algorithm. That helps people find the show. And it's a free way of supporting. If you'd like to do the paid way of supporting, you can, of course, head over to patreon.com slash Cheers. You can fuck over a dollar, five dollars, or whatever tier that you'd like to support us on. Remember, that's how you get onto the show. You can write at us. I answer every single messaging on there. You can write onto the feeds every time I post a new post on there. All of the above. Remember, patreon.com slash Cheers. And remember, you can also tweet at us or comment. We all do answer every single comment. That is commented on every single show, as long as it's not some sort of crazy bot thing that we tend to get. But uh, thank you so much for commenting on the Elder Rings podcast. We've been having fun talking to the Achievers on that one. Yeah. So we appreciate that. Now, Alex, yeah. I would like to start with the show. But, but before I do, I start the show every single week with a single question that I ask you. What have you been playing? Mm, so I finally beat Sekiro for the first time. Okay, that's a big deal. Yeah. So yeah, I, I prior to this, I don't. Did you even say you were playing Sekiro last week? So I, I don't think you did. Uh, I think I was. I think I was going through the FromSoft games, and I said I think Sekiro is probably my next one. Okay, so you definitely you definitely started and yeah. basically finished it by the time we recorded the next episode. So yeah, you've now had a full experience of Sekiro. Yes. What did you think of the game? Very hard. Very, very different. It's from a the difficult. Games. If it's a difficult game. Yes. Demon of Hatred. No, thank you. No, thank you to Demon of Hatred. Uh, yeah. To speak quickly. I can quickly, now say I, th- I believe he is the hardest from soft boss. I think he is harder than Millennia. I think he is. I think he's the hardest one. Harder than Orphan of Cost. I know that gave you issues as well. Honestly, I th- yeah. I, honestly, I, I, at one point, I think Millennia was hard. At one point, Millennia was harder than Orphan of Cost, but then mm. I guess... I agree. I, yeah, I mean, Millennia took me way more tries than Orphan of Cost. I think Orphan of Cost maybe took me 10 tries. Yeah, Millennia? Mil- well, more. Millennia has a lot more one-hit moves, which is unfortunate, because the difficulty yeah. doesn't necessarily come into her combat style. It's that just she has so many ways of killing you very fast. Yeah. You almost can't get hit near that second phase, which is yeah, and kind God, of unfortunate. I don't, I don't love the design of that, but... Mm-hmm. There was a recent bug too, and I don't know if they fixed it to where Millennia will randomly heal even without without hitting you. Recently. That's hilarious. Yeah. Anyways, so I was like, I don't know if they fixed that, but God, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Hopefully, it's it it's a great game. Everyone should still check it out. Uh, yes. See if you can fight Millennia. It's, it's a very fun boss. She is a um, she's a beautiful boss. Like her music set is very yeah. nice. I love her design. Music, very, man. Oh. Music is, oh my God, music is great. You're almost happy when you die because you get to hear the music. Mm-hmm. What have I been doing, Alex? Thank you for asking. Um, not <laughs> much, honestly. Uh, I've been playing Sweden five, having yep. a great time revisiting this game. I'm near the end. 
Um, this is going to be the first time I have fully completed it with all 108 stars of Destiny. If you do not know what that is, I'll be honest, you've uh, fucked up and you need to go play the game. So, Sweden in 5, great game, JRPG, uh, launched on PS2 and I want to say like 2003 or something like that. Uh, I think it launched mm. Japan first. I'm going to check on you it was, and you're, let's see if you get it right. I think I'm way what off. Year, what year did you say? 2003? You're off. Is it 2001? Higher. Higher? You went the wrong way. 2006? Yes. Okay. Wow. Why did I say 2003? I must mm. be getting that confused with something. Uh, it was in my brain for some reason. Anyways, uh, Suikoden 5, fantastic game. One of my favorite Suikoden's. Now, I only finished the first one. Mm. And I did love the Suikoden 1. It's a great game. It's PS1. I don't know when that came out, but that's that's a fantastic game. Everyone should play too. I will be trying Sweet in Two, which is some people's favorite game of all time. So I'm very excited wow. to try that out. Yes, but I will be playing Sweet in One again before I jump into Sweet in Two, mm -hmm. and I fr frankly can't wait. I am very excited to do this playthrough. And again, this is a great time to do it, Alex. Why? Because we have so much time. We can relax. Yep. We don't feel like we have to rush it into anything. Yep. I can catch up on shows and movies and things that I've been doing as well. I've been watching um. Um, Critical Role. I love watching that with the wife. We sit down, and watch yep. that. We watched. Um, actually, we caught up with that. We were behind like five, six oh, episodes. I'm, it's a great show. Oh, I'm, I'm so behind. It's your, that. It's your, it's your. You haven't watched. Um, actually, it's a great show. So basically, it's a game show. It's up. It's about college humor. You've probably seen YouTube videos of them doing silly stuff. Mm -hmm. What they do is it's 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 a game show that you have to correct an incorrect statement by saying um actually, and it's all nerdy stuff. For instance, um, Pok uh, Ash's partner is Charizard. And you'd be like, no, um, actually, it's Pikachu. Like, something like that. But it's very yeah. complex, and it's very nitpicky, and it's very yeah. fun. It's very fun to play along, yeah. especially when you know everything. Like, if they do mm -hmm. a specialized episode on something, and you know you could play along, it's very fun. You yeah. can kind of keep track at home with points and stuff. It's like Jeopardy. I like watching Jeopardy for the exact same reasons. You can kind of play along mm -hmm. and see how much points you get while you're watching the show. Anyways, Alex, we've yes. drowned on long enough. We have a long show for you this week. So expect to be relaxing with us for a long period of time thank you so much again for joining us this week alex we have a huge rumor roundup now i want to say this with a lot of caveats okay. and i almost deleted all of this that i'm about to read to you because we're getting conflicting uh rumors we're getting people saying this is true we're getting people say that literally all this is probably not real but they're not saying what is not real that they're not saying if it's all fake they're not saying if some of it's fake so yeah the only reason I want to bring it up is all, is kind of to bring up the fact that, hey, you know, let's not always believe on face value what we read on Twitter. But also, I, I want to give the proper context that what I'm about to read, because it does come from someone that I do trust heavily and then yeah. someone that I don't know at all. So you're getting a little bit of both. So we're getting rumors from Mr. Matty Plays, which, of course... Very big YouTuber. I love listening to his channel. Mr. Matty Plays, he does retro content and he does, like, kind of review content over on his youtube channel and then someone called skull Z i don't know if you've heard of this person alex skullzy itv i don't i don't know who this is but they're, they're kind of the similar like they do youtube content and stream things they also have like some insider information thing as well similar to how okay. this man plays that so they listed a bunch of things and the only reason i i even saw this to begin with was because uh this man plays he's a known kind of i would say leaker of certain things that he's very close with he retweeted this saying he heard similar things and then I'm going to at the end bring up why this all might be fake or at least exaggerated or who knows. So let's I'm going to start I'm going to read it all it's long and then we're going to end it with why it might be fake. So this is all basically detailed Bethesda. This is going to be the theme. It's all basically Bethesda stuff. So apparently at Roundhouse Studios in Bethesda there's a PvP VE game. It apparently is a Marvel IP. And if you don't know who Roundhouse Studios is, they used to be Human Head Studios. Um, I think they opened their studios in like the 90s, late 90s, 97 or something like that. And then they joined Bethesda when they closed in 2019 and became Roundhouse and they used to be Human Head. So there might be a Marvel IP working with Bethesda. Who knows? Again, if that's true. And then we have some Elder Scrolls 6 stuff. So, Elder Scrolls 6 set in Hammerfell. We've seen, I think we've seen this before. 
Elder Scrolls 6 will have a political system, so there'll be betrayals, marriage, and factions in the game. There will be no dragons in the Elder Scrolls 6. That's a weird thing, but sure. Um, Skyrim, as you know, is big on dragons. That's so. true, I guess. Uh, it's just a weird thing to just have... <laughs> It it for all the things to leak out of a game like th- by the way there's no there's no dragons like or it's like, probably how the fuck- it's uh, so completely some maybe later or yeah. something because it's like you know there's it, that that the dragons it's not it, there's not a thing anymore so don't worry about dr- the dragonborn being in this game true target releases 2025 and 2026 mm. Mm. Bethesda Game Studios Austin and Montreal are working on Spy Team we don't know basically what that is at all. It's a trademark that was filed, I believe, late in 2020. But we haven't heard anything about the game. So whatever that is, they were working worked on it in Austin and Montreal. And then there's a Mandalorian MMO being worked at ZeniMax Online. So that's strange. Maybe it's the leaked footage that we watched. If you remember, Alex, um, in a year yeah. ago, I don't, I don't know. Maybe. Who knows? There's hmm. a Quake reboot in the talks. Ooh. Which in the talks could literally mean anything. Yeah. Elder Scrolls 6 and Fallout remasters will be coming via In Exile. Xbox shifting resources to assist Bethesda with massive workloads. And then there is a potential Elder Scrolls uh, strategy game. Now, why is all of this possibly fake? Jason Schreier kind of alluded to all this and basically said a lot of this is probably not real. He Mm. cited that he sent it to a source uh, with the bullet points and the guy literally messaged back bullshit. (laughs) So who knows um, what is going on with all of this but I wanted to bring all this into the light and speak on like hey this might be happening who knows if it's really going on? Alex, what do you make of all this? The, the, and a, a reason why, I'm, honestly, I'm bringing up like this it might not be real is because it all just sounds like a little too good to be true. You know what I mean? They're working on Marvel. They're working on a Star Wars MMO. They're working on um, uh, really just those two things are just strange to me. They just jump out like so they're working on Star Wars and a Marvel IP. And they have all this other stuff. And, you know, it's just a lot so of stuff I, going on at once. I think the Elder Scrolls 6 thing could be real because there's too many items there that they have too many details. It's like, oh, it's set in this place. It's a political system. There's no dragons. There's too many there. So that could be potentially real. Um, I will say, I, I believe it's real only because it's vague. Yeah. It will have um, a political system. Betrayals, marriage, yeah. and factions matter. Like, it's like, it, that's pretty vague. Yeah. So I feel like no almost dragons, any okay, context so got set in there. I mean, like, yeah. And I, also, I, like, I no dragons, these. like, sure, okay. That's also a weird thing to be leaked. Yeah. Um, also, I want to quickly correct myself. I'm, uh, while we talk, Alex, I'm going to double check. I'm pretty sure um, it was, uh, first off, I don't know how to use Reset Arrow, and Reset Arrow was what um, Jason Schreier used. Mm. to comment on something let me double check and make sure he was actually commenting on this because i don't want to get something confused um with something that happened prior because what's confusing is they were also talking about the we're gonna be talking about this later um uh blizzard stuff that was leaked later uh earlier today we're gonna talk about that later but alex back to you so with the hmm uh the Mando game and this Marvel game. I'll start with the Marvel game. The Marvel game, I, it's it's a little too good to be true because I don't think you know it's, it's gonna be on Marvel IP, but I do feel like they'll have some type of game where it's like a PvP VE game because from I mean rec- from games before I mean we've seen they had the Defiance game because they when when it used to be uh, Human Heads, they had Defiance, they had. Uh, I mean, they've made Prey, and then they've made Dungeon Defenders, which I, I think it's like a like a little co-op game, a role-playing co-op game. I can't remember what that game is, but they they even did a, they did Brink, and Brink was a uh, you know cool PVP type game. So like those games, kind of I'm like okay, that's kind of in their fashion, but I'm, being a Marvel IP, I don't 
So I don't I don't know if I see that. Cuz uh, we're already getting another we're getting so many Marvel IPs. I'm like I don't know. I, like we what was that what's that one that new one that's coming out that's like a strategy one? Uh Seconds so, the, the 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 black and yellow looking emblem. What was it called? The new one that's like a strategy type game? The Marvel game? What was it called again? Oh, you're talking about um uh Forbidden Sons. Oh, thank you. For I was about to say Second Sons. Forbidden Sons, that one. So we have that coming. So I and then we have all the other Marvels. Wait, side. No, I Second Sons? I think actually you're right. Is it Second Son? What is it? Marvel. It's not important. You 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 finish your thought. I will find okay. it. Midnight Suns. Midnight um, Midnight Midnight Suns. Midnight Suns. Midnight thank Suns. you. Sorry, achievers. Thank you. Sorry. No, you um right, so yeah, here. so I don't see it being a Marvel game. Just because I think there's just too much with Marvel going on, I, I, I don't know. I don't. It's it's a weird IP for them, to, or like for them to be like, oh, this studio is gonna make Marvel. So I, I don't see it. With the Mando MMO, I, I could, I maybe could see it, but I don't think that. To, I don't. I wouldn't understand why it's just Mando and not a uh, like. A, I don't know if it's if it would be Mando like as in the Mandalorian show or Mandalorian as in the Mando. You have to it's imagine it's probably it's Mandalorians, like, a, like the people, yeah, like, right? Like, like the people. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. So like you're the bounty hunters, you know, and instead of just being the show, so that's why. Or like so that's why I was like, was like, oh, maybe that could have been the the video that we saw. So that I think that's a whole different game. I don't even think that would be that. Because that's that that game looked like it was too much to the show, because they even have Grogu in it and everything, or whatever that whatever that was. If Grogu. anything, that looked more like a. <laughs> if anything, the big the main the menu looked more like a tail tall game. <laughs> yeah, that was that was strange. And again, so we still strange. don't know if that's real. But I ha I, I just can't I can't I can't it's imagine insane. someone I mean, sat like, there weird. and made that. I just it's hard to believe. Yeah, it's hard to so, believe uh, they sat there and were like, let, let me like. It, I don't. Know. I could see the quake and then the quake reboot. I could see it. I mean, uh, they've. I mean, uh, QuakeCon is. Uh, I don't. I don't think it's happened yet. At the, or is no, it's happening. No. QuakeCon is it's happening. Yeah, August. We covered it last week. I'll get the date. If yeah. You wanna so yeah, quit, keep talking. Yeah. So a quake, a quake reboot. I could definitely see that. I mean, um, August eighteenth through twentieth. Yeah, I can definitely see a quake reboot. I just don't know if it's a, a very. A th it, I think it's for more people who like it's like the, a niche title for people who like it. I don't think it's going to be for everybody. But yeah, the only one that stands out to me that I don't think is going to be a thing is that Marvel IP. So I do I have just, I do have clarification on the Jason Schreier thing. So okay. he was specifically mentioning the Skullzy list of bullet points. And that's what this is. And okay. he sent it to someone who'd know and they responded bullshit. Now both parties could be wrong no one could be wrong everyone could be wrong one person or the other could be wrong i don't know yeah. i'm just giving everyone the information so you guys can decide so they did Thank he you. did say he responded and said bullshit he said a lot of these bethesda quote-unquote insiders all of whom were spreading misinfo about starfo's release date and he said that they've been wrong in the past mentioning Skullzy. just bringing up like hey he doesn't have a perfect record and then most insiders mm -hmm. don't as a point to bring up, but that is an important point that this guy's been wrong in the past about other uh, Bethesda thing. Now, let me mention uh, something that's also uh, was brought up. So, something. So, there was a recent error account that has deleted both their messages and their account. So, I'm having trouble finding what was said originally. But we have more Bethesda esque information out. So, this yeah. was in response to the first message about Starfield that they made. So, and this is a, a someone called Heavy008. Now, Jason Schreier said they can confirm this was legit. They uh, And he says on Recent Era, uh, uh, quote, can't necessarily back up everything they said, but they were definitely who they said they were. Hope the lawyers aren't going after them. So apparently this person disclosed who they were, which is a awful idea if you're going to leak things. And people even were making fun of this person saying, you must not know what NDAs are. Because uh, that is huge breach of contract. If uh, if if especially Jason Schreier saying like, yeah, that person is real. So I know 
so this is wild but here's what was said again i cannot find the original statement so and i'm having issues but here's what was said they said they personally uh, were not fans of Bethesda games, but that Starfield had an over overabundance of content, enough content that they probably have to cut some, and they will, uh, and they will hit um, November 11th. And if you like Bethesda games, you'll probably love Starfield. The shooting was okay, but it was subjective, probably similar to Fallout 4. This sounds like maybe a tester, but again, I, I'm going to see if I can find who this was. Mm-hmm. flat mechanics um were also pretty subjective he they weren't a big fan of it but others might like it um and then when they were talking about the engine being quote-unquote crap they meant from a usability standpoint as a developer no not its compatibility they gave the example of Un- uh, unreal engine 4 and unity being super user-friendly compared to cry engine but cry engine was really powerful so basically it, it this kind of sounds like someone that was maybe a tester i'm gonna see if i can find who this person was So um, I can actually give what their original statement was. But it looks like this person straight up leaked some information. And at least the Starfield stuff is real. Uh, That Heavy 008 is legit. Which is pretty wild that that person was like, yeah, I'm gonna completely leak all this. And and that that is not a... That's not good. And uh, oh yeah, so it's a f- a former that was a former Bethesda Game Studio character artist. Mm. Also, the remasters from Exile in Exile, I can definitely see those. Yeah, again, that's another kind of generic that's, thing where it's like, yeah, I mean, that seems pretty. That one's probably gonna happen because I mean, we we haven't even had a Fallout One to like like the for even the first two, we haven't gotten the first two or even three remaster at all. Mm-hmm. So and then or Elder Scrolls one, two, and three. So I, I I could definitely see those. Yeah, and also we don't we don't currently know what they're even working on. There is there was a rumor last year. The um, last thing they did was Wasteland three. Yes, um, and there's a rumor they're working on some sort of steampunk game called Project Cobalt. Um, mm. that was released by I believe Jez Gordon of last year around August. Yeah. So. W- they're definitely working on that. Now you can definitely get a smaller team. Um, if you have a big enough team, I don't know how big of a headcount in Exile has. Um, but oh, and Cult of Holy Detonation. That was, I think, that's their most recent game too. I've never heard of that. <laughs> so, they have seventy employees. So that's not a lot of people. So if yeah. they're working on two projects, technically the person mentioned three. Now, of course, you could be support studio. So you, so, you know, they could be working with other things or Microsoft yeah. might be heading a lot of the uh, assistance with the project or they're in early talks mm-hmm. with the remasters. There could be a bunch I of mean, possibilities here. But what I want to bring up is. If they are working on all that, that is a lot for. And that that's, you know, that's a late number. That was in 2018. So they yeah. could they could be very well be close. Well, they to, haven't done much too. all they've done is the Bard's Tales and Wasteland. And then the torment game. It, it, uh, yeah, I mean, are they a newer team, right? Like, I, I think. Uh, I think they. Came, they let me see. They, 2002. 28. Uh, wait, let me see. Oh yeah, founded 2002. Yeah, 2002. Yeah. yeah, they were founded in 2002. And yeah, and a studio. Yeah. So yeah, it, they haven't been around for a super long time, and they I mean, have, it's they been have 20, a, It's been 20 years. That's I'm not gonna lie. That, that's, that, that's, that's true. That's true. It's 20 I'm, years. I'm saying relative to other people, but that's true. That is a I long guess, time. Yeah. It is strange to say that it's 20 years ago, and it was. I always forget that. Uh, yeah. But it looks... Yeah, I mean, they do have a, a, an impressive sleep. I don't personally know them, but I know a lot of people love the Wasteland games. They made all of those. Yeah. Uh, the Mage Tale, um, Bard's Tale 4, like Bard's you said. Yeah. I heard people liked that. I can't speak to it, but... Yeah. So, we'll see from them. Who know, Who I couldn't tell you if... Mm. If this is if this is real, I have no information on if if this could be yeah. real or not. So I'm going to be cautious. I'm going to be like, okay, like I know this information now. Let's see what happens. Mm. Um, and we'll come back to. Oh, and you know, I'm actually going to snit stitches here. Uh, in that same post, they ended with uh, Jason Schreier ended with um, um, there are at least two World of Warcraft mobile games of development. One is a Pokemon Go style World of Warcraft game, and the other is a Clash of Clans one. So, like, basically picture those types of games, and then wa- mm. the the mobile team is working on World of Warcraft versions of those two, which is cool, I guess. I don't I yeah. care less. But 
There you yeah. go. I was going to talk about that later in the show, but actually, you know, it's more of a rumor, so I do want to bring it up, although I yeah. wholeheartedly believe that is that is true. Mm-hmm. Alex. Mm. I want to give you two options of news stories. Here we go. We don't usually do this, but it, it's kind of fun. Yeah. So we can talk about Sony's game preservation, or we can talk about Xbox Bethesda game showcase. Why do you do this to me? Let's talk Xbox together because we kind of naturally are going that way, anyways. How about that? Yeah, yeah, and we we did. I mean, a couple uh, a couple about episodes NXI, ago, right? we did we did talk we did talk about you know the PlayStation uh, the, the whole PlayStation thing already. So let's let's go to that. Okay. Recently announced, Xbox Games Bethesda will stream on Sunday, June twelfth at ten a.m. Pacific, an Xbox and Bethesda Games Showcase. Not much else was said. We don't know anything else. It could be anything. Uh, from upcoming releases, uh, games coming to the this platform, Game Pass, all that. All basically, use your imagination. It could really be anything. So, Alex, mm. I want to know what you think might be at this. Now, important to know, it says Xbox and Bethesda Games. I wonder if it's still a it thing. Could, yeah, I, I imagine it's branding. Some sort of branding yeah, maybe thing. That's, where, maybe that's a new thing now. I, yeah, and well, also I wouldn't be shocked if this is to make sure people understand. Hey, Bethesda, as in like Starfield's going to be at this because because yeah, so that's Starfield's going to be here. So I feel like so, do you, Xbox and Bethesda kind of sh- already sets your expectations for the event. Hey, you're going to see Starfield. It's going to be at the end. We're going to end yeah. the show with it. Like you can already kind of picture that as you, the the show ender, right? Whenever they if they if they finish the whole Activision acquisition, if they finish it. Um, Talk about that later in the show. Yeah, because that's still going on. If they, uh, do you think they'll do something similar to that too? So like, that's their other biggest acquisition. So so, well, do you think they'll do a, oh, there's an Xbox Activision game showcase? That's a good question. Now, that would be much more complicated because there are so many Activision games. So maybe you well, want well, to set up a... Well, Activision will have, you know, let's say Overwatch, uh, and it, uh, the WoW stuff, and Call of Duty. Like, that's the main big three. Right. What? Yeah, what, what I was going to say was, um, with Activision, you have an interesting issue of... You have so many teams and mm. so many people making games that you almost need to say and activision but also are you really gonna call your showcases xbox Xbox and bethesda and activision no right so i imagine we'll have maybe xbox and xbox and blizzard or maybe well there's gonna be two separate shows like you know let's say you know the playstation has so many state of plays right and that's the the state of play is gonna result on this it's gonna be mainly on this game these showcases gonna be like oh xbox and bethesda showcase then there's gonna be xbox and activision showcase you know or I, I, because I it's a great it's know. a i mean no you're asking i think a great question i honestly i don't know i want to say would you want that what what would you want them to do that so like let's say since they're still they're doing the bethesda showcase with them like since that's a, a thing now it looks like do you would you want them to do one for activision do would, would first you first off want... they will because they that's how they're going to announce call of duty yeah, and they know everyone's gonna look at their thing when they call it an Activision or something, or or mm. I don't I don't know. Honestly, uh, in a perfect world, you just call it Xbox and people would understand. But there's now now you have too much product to be mm. able to set expectations correctly with the content that you're gonna be streaming to them. Right? Well, the reason when you just asking... go ahead. So when you so in three years and let's say in three years they have all this ironed out, mm. everything is now consolidated into an Xbox house right yeah do you continue to call things xbox and activision do you do you do you have separate showcases hey this is xbox and bethesda hey this is xbox and Activision. hey this is xbox and blizzard and and you kind of keep it saturated because now you get into an interesting uh conundrum how do you market what to expect because if everyone goes in expecting something to a tune of diablo overwatch call of duty at every single showcase you do you yeah. are going to have an issue with delivering expectations and yeah. you'll be like what the internet makes fun of for a week. And see, that's what my thing was because now I, E3 is probably dead. 
So it, it is, you know, that's yeah. So that's not even going to be a thing anymore. So would you right. want them to have like, like, like what I said, state of, since PlayStation has their state of play, like they have f- or one quarterly, I think it is or something like that. I don't yeah, know. Roughly. Yeah. It's so obvious that want, it's just for would, commercials. So, uh, do you want Xbox to do the same now? Since I mean, where else are they going to show their stuff? Yeah, so do I? Uh, you're asking if I want a quarterly Xbox showcase, basically, right? Yeah, because we, I mean, we do get ID at Xbox, and then we do get X- yeah. Xbox. Uh, what was it? XO nineteen or XO? You know, XO blank blank. Yeah, we had the XO stuff too that so, they like, tried to make do, a thing. Yeah. So, like, would you want them to do <sighs> like what we said, Xbox and Bethesda, Xbox Activision, or do you want them just to do a solid one thing? I think if you do a solid one thing, it gets confusing to people who. Yeah who care unless you are very direct now lest we forget the xbox gameplay showcase that they did like two years ago that had no gameplay in it like you do not want to find yourself in a situation that where i get to go on my podcast and shit on them for 30 minutes yeah so like hey gameplay showcase everything's a trailer everything's a cgi trailer why did you call this again you could have called this literally anything else and you called it a game just an xbox reveal showcase that's it (laughs) god i want to lose my mind um yeah but yeah going back going back to this yeah you find yourself in a very interesting how do you communicate every time you have a showcase what it's going to be right state of play has kind of had that same issue too right they're all Mm -hmm. pretty average right nintendo directs also did this too right like they would have a bunch of them and they would all be kind of whatever and state of plays are kind of the same right there hasn't really been a great state of play right i think there was the um there was one really good one. I don't remember what it was. I'm blanking on what it was. It might have been Last of Us or something. There, were, there was one really good one. Aside from that, though, that's that's been it. There's a, there's really only been one really good one. So you have yeah. an issue when you come when you make too many showcases because you're trying to invent things to show. We can kind yeah. of think of Bethesda when they were having their E3 thing and they pretended like they were supposed to have an e3 showcase and they were just showing random things that made no sense when they revealed yeah. elder scrolls 6 t- almost 10 years before it's even gonna see a a, a screen a like yeah. like you, you get into situations like that now xbox will have so many studios that might not even be an issue so i don't yeah. i don't it, he, i it, my, my answer i don't know most likely what they do is they focus on this type of branding hey this is going to be xbox and bethesda hey this is gonna be xbox and blizzard hey this is gonna be xbox and activision and basically what that means is bethesda elder scrolls 6 and starfield uh you're gonna have activision with call of duty and spyro or whatever you're gonna have mm-hmm. blizzard with diablo hearthstone world of warcraft etc yeah very long-winded way of answering a very simple question i no, apologize no, 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 to everyone yeah, yeah. at home but that is my thought process yeah so Next question, I like or you asked, what do you think we're going to see? <sighs> Starfield is the easiest thing to say. The question do you is think they're going to start middle or that's going to be based that has on to that? that has to end it. I don't think you I think you probably confirm you'll see Starfield at some point. We'll probably get word like maybe at the end of August like hey, expect expect to see us here or something I think, you know you I get a little peek that starfield is gonna be that i think we're gonna get like a 20 minute thing of like seeing the actual gameplay and what it's gonna like the bus and the bus says the thing is like oh we're gonna dive in into this <laughs> planet <laughs> now i want to answer this uh only because achievers listening will be like you guys didn't talk about this um mm-hmm. elder scrolls 6 no. you see anything no cgi trailer I think no. I think absolutely not because you don't need to stray people from Starfield. That would just yeah. You that that yeah. that will just the, the the only reason they showed the thing is because people just wouldn't stop bitching. Excuse my French. <laughs> I don't even think that's why. I think people they showed it because they were looking for reasons to have an E three showcase, but that's not hmm. important anymore. But um. Yeah, like no, I don't say I don't think we'll see anything with Elder Scrolls, and if we do, I think I think we'll get something simple like the Mass Effect uh, one, the, the little teaser that we got where you know the the teaser that we got where you see Liara walking up 
to the thing and see the N7 thing and like mm, something that's it, yeah. on that on that line that's it. You just see maybe like a person walking up to a hill. You see the and you see the the world that you're going to and and that's it. So, like they like I don't we think agree with Starfield. Anything. We're going to see probably all the stuff that we've seen prior. So, we've seen concept art. We saw like the buddy person that they revealed, like one of the mm-hmm. companion people you'll have. So, we'll see all that. Mm-hmm. We'll probably see a bunch of of that consolidated into a 15 to 20 minute trailer reveal type thing. Now, what mm-hmm. I want to ask you Alex is will we see Arcane Studios there? And will we see one of my most anticipated games, Redfall? Remember this, the vampire game mm-hmm. with the four characters, Left 4 Dead-esque uh, type game yes. revealed um, uh, l- l- last year, I believe. Yes. I um, I think we do. I think we do. It's still subject to 2022. We, now It's summer 2022. That's now, in three months. Now, do I believe that now? No, not really. So I, I think that's getting pushed for sure. But I do think we see some of it. I think we finally see what the game looks like. Because reminder, we just see a CG no, yeah, trailer. I think we'll, yeah, um, we'll actually see what the game looks like. I I do really think we will see Redfall. Hopefully, um, with a date attached to it, it will not be in mm-hmm. summer. Yeah, there's just yeah. no way that thing comes out and it's like, hey, we're coming out in August. Like, there's no yeah. way. So I I, I we'll think definitely... it's gonna. I think it will be probably early next year. I I, I I'll be interested to see if they try to hit Q4. Uh, before mm-hmm. Q4 ends, so maybe around February or something. But we'll probably see a Skyrim for the 60th anniversary edition again. <laughs> That'd be awesome. We'll come no, up with Skyrim we'll again. We'll get Elder Scrolls Online, a new Elder Scrolls Online DLC. No, they they just released one, right? I don't think you they can they. There's no. They just released one, right? I don't, <laughs> your face is like there've been a million of them, so why wouldn't they? No, I, I think they literally just released one, so I don't most, I don't think they'd be able to make another one. Yeah, um, most recent. Yes, but I think it uh, is. I think I think Redfall is probably a big chance. We will not see Tango GameWorks because they just released um, Tokyo. Excuse me. Um. Uh. I'm blanking on the name, Alex. It just came out. The Tokyo. Uh. Th- uh Ghostwire, Ghostwire, Tokyo. Ghostwire Tokyo. Thank you. Um. Yeah. They just released that, so we're not gonna see them for a while. Will we see Machine Games? I don't think so. Indiana Jones. Probably not. Right. Hmm. Hmm. That saying? one's. I was. I, I. I feel like we can see that more than, of course, Elder Scrolls. Oh, just yeah, because they obviously. already gave us a little teaser of the hat. Yeah. N- yeah. That. That is. Uh, assumably, them starting development though. So I do feel like that's still far out. We do have Maybe. a chance that they have two teams working on Wolfenstein Three. So they might have so, Wolfenstein 3 and Uniac Jones at the same time. So maybe we'll see Wolf- Wolfenstein Three. I, I. I don't doubt we could. So there is a potential there. So fuck you. Excuse my friend. <laughs> we, I bet you we will see Elder Scrolls DLC because the upcoming one is called High Isle and it comes out June 6th. There's another one? The latest one was Ascending Tide and it came out March 14th. And the other one is coming out June 6th and it's called High Isle. And that's a future DLC. It says upcoming. So yes, we will see that for what? sure. <laughs> they have so much. I had to look it up because I was like, dude, I, I remember seeing something that there was another one. So, OK, I, I kind of want to read you the list of these DLCs. Real quick. <laughs> OK, Imperial City, Orsinium, Thieves Guild, Dark Brotherhood, Shadows of the Hist, Morrowind, Horns of the Reach, Clockwork City, Dragon Bones, Somerset, Wolf Hunter. Merkmire, Wrathstone, <laughs> Elsewire, Scalebreaker, <laughs> Dragonhold, Horrorstorm, Greymoor, Stonethorn, Markarth, Flames of Ambition, Blackwood, Waking Flame, Deadlands, Ascending Tide, and now High Isle. That's all since 2015. That was 20, How many was 26. That? 26 DLCs in the matter of... I mean, it's impressive. Eight, what is that, seven years? I don't know what the, how substantial all those are. I don't know if those are the equivalents of Sims packs or something, but... Two, two. It looks like it's three DLCs per year. So almost a quarter. Three to four. So three to four, yeah. It looks wow. like it's each quarter. That's impressive. Yeah. That is very yeah, impressive. 
Yeah, it's actually yeah, it's four per year, so it's one a quarter. And I know people, like. I know people like the games, so I'm I'm not here to to dump no, on yeah. your parade. So I, I hope people are I, I, maybe. I mean, hey, we might actually get a look at the next thing, which I would have said absolutely not, but since they're releasing them that much, it is a huge possibility that we do. Yeah. Now, the only one, uh, we have a few left to talk about, but uh, id. Okay. Do you think we see anything from id? Last time we, we saw them was, of course, um, uh, Doom. Doom. So, my thing is, there's I chance. think, there's a ch- I think there's a chance. Is it weird to me that, like, because it, it's, um, hmm. there's between, it's between, th- it's between two things. It's between something Wolfenstein related. Okay. Or something Quake related. Or both. Or both. I mean, that could be cuz at first I want my mind wanted to say Prey, like maybe they'll make a sequel to the new Prey, but I was like no. I don't think that got enough heat, no, so I don't that, think there's no way, right? I think, I, I, I think yeah, I think it's gone. Um I know yeah. people liked the game, but I just don't think it sold well. It's, it's Not like to with be fa- Rage 2. I don't think Rage is it, I don't think <laughs> Yeah, you don't think anything. Rage 3 is coming out? <laughs> Yeah. um but uh uh yeah like like you brought up yeah we, we there i will say there there's a there's a ch- now i won't say prey 2 is impossible because i mean microsoft money you know you can make up any reason to bring out prey 2 because and it did get a lot of fanfare post release like people came mm-hmm. back to the game and said it was really good um it just released to kind of nothing it just kind of came out so I could yeah. see it releasing in kind of sticking around for a while. Will will that will pray t- no, it probably won't. But you know, never say never. Now we've said a lot with Bethesda. I think we kind of got out of the obvious ones. Now there were a lot of rumor things that we've covered before mm-hmm. that could happen um in my opinion just talking about like just like rumored uh, stuff that they're working on. Not as exciting as things that you just know because most of the rumor things that we know about are just they're working on project this so what instead of uh, what we'll do alex is it is technically xbox and bethesda do you think we see anything xbox centralized so like anything from uh the major xbox game studio first party do you think we see something fable do we see obsidian's new game of uh of out any of that possible i wouldn't i won't be terribly shocked if we see something about avowed because you have that hardcore rpg audience there already hey mm-hmm. what, what's a better chance to remind them hey by the way obsidian exists there they made your the, your favorite game of all time fall into vegas we're just gonna remind you that we're making it about and it's out in 2024 2023 whatever they say the last time we saw something was in 2020 for avowed it was at uh another like showcasey thing right I believe so. Uh, let me see. I'm pretty oh. sure it was at like a, a show Game showcase that, in yeah. 2020. Yeah. 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 So. So yes, I definitely I could see about. Yes. I know for a fact now Redfall because I forgot that that's an Xbox exclusive game. So Redfall for sure, we're definitely gonna see that. So ha- happy for you. You're definitely gonna see your game there. Um. Woo! Yeah, I I can see that. Put up the and about. I can I can definitely see Avowed because uh, we haven't seen that in a little while, and it's coming to game one, day one to, uh, Game Pass. That's all these that games to... are day one game. Which cra- no, which is sure. crazy. Everything you see at the Xbox Bethesda showcase will come to Game Pass, which fucking is fuck- wild, <laughs> fucking crazy. It is just nonsense that that's true. That's a fact. I can say that it is is wild. But I I really I'm pretty strong with the um, Avowed. Uh, call out that that you uh, that you and I are kind of throwing out there. So yes. I could I could definitely see that happening. Um, do we see anything from people we haven't seen in a while? Maybe uh, Compulsion? Probably not. Uh, they made We Happy Few. No, uh, they just recently released Contrast again, uh, which was their first mm. game. So they've only made two games. So they they could bring something out. Um, the only thing I really am thinking about is uh, Undead Labs, uh, State of K three, could see something with that. That's another one where it's probably yep. next year. I could see it yep. coming out next year. Um, I I could see that too. 
uh, we're kind of running out of things, so we're probably going to end it around there. Alex, anything standing out with you? Uh, of course, people we haven't mentioned, Ninja Theory with Hellblade. Uh, technically, that is due out. Uh, did, so did they give that a date? I don't remember. So I want to... I want to point. I want to think of it. Uh, I'm gonna I'm point out a new a game that we haven't seen yet. They have not seen it. I'm sorry. And I feel like we will see it sometime this year. If if it and I want your opinion on it. Okay. The new Bioshock. Now that's a great that's a that's a great question. Now they did announce um, that the studio that is currently working on it. Um, mm-hmm. I am blinking on the name. It was something Cloud. Uh, studio um, working on Bioshock. Um, I, I the question honestly is who got them? Who got them? Cloud Chamber uh, Cloud is Chamber. working on the new Bioshock. Now the question I ask yourself: Who got the two K? Who got the two K? And who wrote the check? Because that's who's going to be showing Bioshock. No way two K just reveals Bioshock, even though they definitely could. I think someone get PlayStation or Xbox gets to 2K, writes the check and says, we get to show off Bioshock mm-hmm. first. So I, I like where your head's at. I think it is a possibility. We see the game and we get the title and we get the yeah. release year. I think that's a huge possibility. But Maybe a season and- trailer. Um, but and we could put that, we could put that leak rumor to rest about it being in the 1960s Antarctica. Yeah, it, um, and it is. I think it is. Um, yeah, because yeah, because uh, Colin Moriarty from yes, Sacred from, Symbols said, took, had, yeah. was talking about it. Yeah, he did that on his actual. Uh, 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 it's Discord. codenamed Parkside. <laughs> Codename what? So it says right here. Um, he said it, it takes place in 1960s on yeah. Antarctic city called yeah. Borealis. The game's code That's a cool name. Parkside, and it says he's been told that the development team has incredibly latitude to get it right. Okay. Like, so yeah. Okay. So but that sounds okay. sounds cool. No, it does. It does. It does. It sounds yeah, very so, cool. Uh, I, I have a feeling we'll see that because, and be, and I'm and people are thinking I was like, why add an Xbox showcase? I mean, think about it. Bioshock One it, wasn't it an Xbox exclusive for it a while? Was, it was. Now now who will have? The, it's not even a question of where the, will there be. Who wrote the Who wrote the check? I mean, I'm real. I'm being honest here. Who got to him first? Who got the big check? Who who wrote out like, hey, we get to reveal it first? It could be PlayStation. It could be Xbox. I really have no. I, I don't have any insight on who it could be. I think I think there I is think a chance we Xbox, get. Man. I think w- there is a chance we get it revealed this year. Yeah. And I think there's a huge chance that um. Well, because if it's not here. Where else would it could it could it be revealed at PlayStations, whatever the fuck they have later in the year, state of I play guess, yeah. or whatever they're gonna call it. I, I I I think there's a chance they show the title this year and they give a, like a year date mm-hmm. and like hey it's gonna come out this year. Now I do not believe it just started development because they did announce that studio and they announced that they were working on that in like 2019. Yeah. So they've had three years plus whatever they were working on prior to that. I t- highly doubt they started a brand new team. And just started working on it from like zero. They had probably some mm. sort of pre-pro done. So what was, I do, called, what was that place called? Cloud what? Cl- Cloud Chamber. Cloud Chamber. Of course, two K. Um, studio. Yeah. yeah. So we we sh- we shall see. Um, the team is split between um, uh, uh, Navajo, no Novato, California, and Montreal, Quebec. And apparently, it's a very talented team. Um. With yeah, a and lot of events, and their team consists so. of veterans from all the Bioshocks. So yeah, it has a great chance of being good. Um, they do not have uh, Mr. Ken Levine though. So yeah, Ken Levine's hmm. the right guy. Right? We'll, we'll we'll see. I I I've, so for some reason that's been on the back of my mind. I'm like mm, Bioshock, and I'm like, man, when will we see it? We could see it, man. We could see it. Who knows? For real. Yeah. Like who knows? I don't. I don't. I don't know. And anything you want to cover before we uh, we head off this topic? Things we haven't talked about. Initiative with Perfect Dark. We do not see that. I don't think they've had too much trouble. I think. Yeah, to, uh, I think they're trying to lay low that. with that right now. That uh, yeah, and also we've heard way too much rumors that they're having trouble staffing. Of course, famously, Crystal Dynamics is now working with them, which is wild. Yeah. Uh. Of course, Mo Yang, 
you know, three four three. These are you know things, but I don't think we'll see them. Uh, won't won't be shocked if three four three shows off their battle mm-hmm. royale Halo thing. But again, what what is an Xbox Bethesda game showcase? Is it really just Bethesda and they That's just have thing. Xbox like, in the name? Really just is it, yeah. So I don't I don't know what the showcase is going to be. Is it really just Bethesda showcase and Xbox has their name on it now? Is it really? Yeah. Hey, this is a, an hour and a half of xbox and bethesda announcements all in one like kind of package i don't know we're really mm-hmm. gonna see and we're we're gonna be able to kind of like tell when this happens in the future like all right this is kind of the painting that they're gonna have every time they announce something that's called an xbox and bethesda showcase because they've had just well, showcases prior to this and they have owned bethesda prior to that so this could just be a game to see if you think that we would see it was that i'm sorry i have one more game to see if you think we'll see it okay Gear six. No, uh, no. As we far as I understand, they no, because as far as I understand, they've started that later than what you would assume. So okay. they probably started pre pro relatively early after Gears Five. But as far as I understand, what I've heard, they've actually like, like, wor- like actually working on the game relatively later. So we might not see that until so let's say 2024, 2025. Okay. But Again, I could be wrong. I'm working yeah, on information five, yeah, I've heard. Five from came out in 2019, so yeah. it's been I mean, it's, it's been, been three years. years. Uh, when did Gears of War four come out? Was it 2016? Uh, Let me see. Because that would be three years, and if they're trying to hit Gears a three year mark, 2016, yeah, yeah. So if they're trying to hit three year marks, that means it comes out this year. I do not. And Gears no way. Was 2011. That was five years. Yeah, but that was different. It was. It was a. No, large... no, there's a whole. This, this is a. This is a new trilogy. So yeah. So. I don't think it's crazy to say we might see that next year, but I I I, I really think and that that rumor was that was on the Nvidia leak. I'm just saying. Was it really? If we're, yeah, Gear Six was on the Nvidia leak. So was Bioshock. Ooh. So was King March Four. So was the Destroy Humans remake. Was so was like a bunch of all this okay, stuff. Okay, yeah, no. That? So that that actually changes my mind quite a bit. Actually, we might actually see a reveal. At the showcase, because it says that the Bioshock was 2022. I don't believe that. I feel like we'll maybe see it this year, but I don't know if that. And then it says that could have been just placeholder too. too. You know, yeah. they just put stuff at places sometimes. Yeah, so. yeah, because that was another Nvidia leak uh, list thing. Wow. Yeah. So I, that kind of colors my opinion a little, little brighter. Actually, we might actually see a new Gears game, and at least maybe announced again. We need to see what this means. Is it an Xbox? Is it a Bethesda? Is it both? Who? I, yeah. It's gonna be confusing. Are we? You know, we'll we'll have to see. We'll have to see. But I am excited. Yeah. Will we see Gears? Yeah, I, I I'm I'm a little higher on it now than I was prior because that Nvidia leak has proven time and time again it's correct. And I, mm-hmm. of course, it's correct that Gears Six is being worked on. Is are we gonna see it? Is the is the is the thing? Yep. Sony. You know what? No. Gonna call an audible. We're sticking with uh, Xbox so we don't have to go Sony then Xbox. Or Sony, yeah. Sony then Xbox again. So let's just stick with Xbox. Sure. Okay. This is a Bloomberg article writing, written by Brody Ford and Jason Schreier. They wrote an article detailing their thoughts and also a look at how the Microsoft Activision merger could be blocked. They cite a few examples, mainly Wall Street seemingly not being on the side of the purchase. How can you tell what makes them say this? Well, you can look at the share pricings to kind of tell you and color a picture. Activision, as currently of recording, is sitting at $77. Why does this matter? So a share price is at $77. If you remember, Microsoft Purchase detailed that they will be buying the company at $95 a share. Meaning if you buy it, you are now guaranteed that difference when the merger comes through. Why is it closer to that number? It could show a trepidation from the stock market themselves. Stating that they might have concerns that the FTC could block this site, uh, this sorry, this merger altogether. There is a new head um, of the SEC called Lin- Lina Khan, relatively new, and uh, she has stated prior that she wants a more forceful approach at large uh, merger uh, mergers like these. Um, but again, what does that mean, and what context uh, was that stated in? It was very unclear when I was uh, researching for this topic. 
And this gets much, 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 much more complicated with laws and things like that. Not only does it have to be approved in the U.S. board of FTC, and that and approve is a strange word. I've actually listened to. Um, I'm actually going to bring up his name later. Her whole law described because I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about with law stuff. So it's actually not really an approval process, Alex. Um, it's it's really a we let you do it. Mm-hmm. So they just let it happen. It's not really a they're not really approving it. They're just kind of when it happens, they look they kind of you know. Circle some things, X some things out, and be like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. And, like, you know, they don't approve it. They just, you know, it just goes. Mm. They don't go, like, to Linicon and be like, hey, you know, do you say yes? <laughs> so, that's an important thing to note. Um, I'm going to bring up a quote from Mr. Hoglaw that he gave on Twitter, by the way. Great YouTube. Great YouTube channel. Go over to Hoglaw on YouTube if you want some great law content he he literally does just laws on a bunch of stuff he does like games he does um uh certain things like uh not, not necessarily games but maybe tied to games he does sometimes like uh pop culture things so just go check him out he's actually an awesome awesome listen but um sorry alex got kind of sidetracked there alex this is a obviously complicated issue right and i think it's fair to say we're pretty uh, unqualified to Really give substantial thoughts on will a giant mm. corporation be passed by the FTC or not, right? And again, mm. passed, will it be allowed? So, what we can do is we can kind of speculate. I just wanted to bring this up to the achievers. If you want to uh, give your opinion on something, uh, you definitely can. We've been talking about this for a long time, so I definitely don't blame you if you want to move on from this. But uh, before I throw it to you, let's bring up um, an opposing viewpoint. So, they brought up, uh, of course, all these points that, hey, it might not go through with these. But this is via Hoglaw on Twitter, states the following. And, of course, this is very uh, opposing. So this is a, a, a quote uh, that he is quoting from the article. So, quote, there is no indication that Wall Street believes the deal will fail. And that's, that's uh, with air quotes. Microsoft and Activision is trending at a 730, 730 from the market with a year plus time of time value of money. Discounts in inflammatory environment also incorporated. Complete, unmitigated bullshit. And I don't use such terms lightly. Analysis like this should be given equal treatment to a screed from Anon Mouse XX69420 on Reddit. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Mr. Hoglaw completely tearing uh, this article apart. Uh, with it, with his kind of uh, review of what they were saying in the article, basically amounting it to this has no substance in law, period, and they don't know what they're talking about, which, uh, I'll be honest, Alex, I will believe Mr. Hoglaw over uh, two people who are not, like, actual lawyers. So, mm. with all this said, all of this done, Alex, do you have anything to add? I don't know. It's really hard. I I don't know. Like I'm not too much on the on this stuff, but I don't. Th- I don't think it. I th- I don't think it'll fail. I don't think most people think it'll fail. I think I think no, most the people. Only reason just because I mean, like Microsoft has a lot of money. So and I'm if, glad you brought that if, up. If, if Disney can own a monopoly of a bunch of shit, <laughs> I think Microsoft is fine with Activision. So yeah, there's a lot of so first off, they would have issue and they actually bring it up in the article to 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 be fair to Jay Schreier and um okay. and uh, uh Browdy Fort. Sorry, I forgot the name. To be fair to them, they do kind of bring it up. They bring up that a uh, a lawyer that they um did they talk to a mention? I used up my Bloomberg clicks so I can't read the article anymore. So like I, I so I have to I go off memory but um as far as I remember, they they talked to a lawyer and they were like, "Yeah, there's a there's like a ten percent chance that that they would get uh any sort of recom from this or uh, sorry like attacked on this from like a yeah. law standpoint and like and he literally said and a zero percent chance of it like stopping anything because yeah th- it's not clear so like if this purchase go through there's no clear indication that this now makes a closed market like it is now just microsoft and 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 now it is a monopolistic environment so even though there are a lot of antitrust concerns i believe in america and just kind of politics in general mm. i do not think anything of the sorts is anywhere close to being problem in this scenario specifically alex thank you for bringing it up when disney is literally sitting right there if we have no issues with disney 
then we definitely don't have an issue here with yeah. Microsoft buying Activision Blizzard when Ubisoft is still on the table, which we'll talk about later. Which mm-hmm. with with a two K still on the table, with you know examples similar to that. Okay. I do not. I I I always bring it up with like. If you really think this will stop, Disney bought 20th Century Fox and no bought, one batted yeah. a fucking eye. They bought 20th Century Fox. They bought fucking Marvel. They bought fucking uh, Lucas Lucas Art Lucas Film Lucas Arts. Which one was it? Lucas Films? They they bought Luke. They bought okay, Star they, Wars Lucas Films. Star Wars, yeah, whatever. You yeah, want like call. it's fucking. Wild. <laughs> yeah. So I 20th will, Century Fox, like they own. All of that. Yeah, so I, I appreciate you bringing that up because that's exactly where my head was going. It's like, if you really think this is blocked, where were you when 20th Century was was purchased? Because I had the same issues with that. I'm like, we are getting in danger territory with this. Now, was I one of the people that was like, fuck yeah, we get X-Men movies? Of course I was because I'm a nerd, but... We are mm. getting... We were getting into dangerous territories here. We are also getting dangerous here. I've said it before. It's getting weird. Especially when we have more to talk about later in the show. It's getting very getting very strange with all these studios getting purchased. But, again, check out Hoglaw. He's really good. Speaking of acquisitions. Because we're kind of, we're really on a roll, Alex. Like, we're, we're, mm-hmm. we're like going like on the flow between stories and stories. Speaking of yeah. acquisitions, private equities could be eyeing Ubisoft as a next acquisition. Some rumblings mm-hmm. are coming out that some private equity firms are coming to potentially sniff around and purchase Ubisoft. Nothing seems to be serious. There's seemingly no offers or an actual real purchase pending by any of these. Who are some of the culprits involved? Well, Blackstone Incorporated and KKR and Co. Oh, Alex. Of course, Blackstone and KKR and Co. My god. Ooh, who would have who who would have guessed it's the abandoned boot. The- <laughs> <laughs> they hired him. Oh my god. It's, it's, it's all connected. It's all connected. It's Microsoft hired them, bought them, so they can buy <laughs> Shadow Corporations. Now, yeah. who are these there? Uh, who are the huge corporation now? Uh, they could be contemplating the purchase. What what it seems to be uh, studying the French business. This is a direct quote from uh, some um, people just looking at this. Uh, why do they think that them? was a uh, being a direct quote from Bloomberg? I'll actually get into that. I, I don't know too much about this, but I can kind of I, I, I studied a little bit of who these people are and what they do. Mm. So I kind of I, I can bullshit my way around, like trying to yeah. semi explain it and achieve it. I, I, I'm sure at home will correct me. Uh, but those are the two that could be uh, potentially sniffing. Um, now, a lot of interesting things came up from this. People brought up that uh, during a recent financial hearing, Alex. Someone mm. asked uh, Yves why they hadn't, um, why they haven't uh, honestly been purchased. It was basically them asking, like, "Hey, why haven't we gotten offers?" And Yves kind of gave this, like, "Well, you know," uh, he basically gave an answer, like, "You know, the like, like uh, the right price like hasn't been given out, or or something to the effect of like, hey, like." what what if um uh, the, the right price hasn't been given out or the negotiation hasn't been set and then um one of his assistants basically are like assistants a uh, rough way of saying it. you know one of the higher executives there w- uh, leaned into the call and went if uh if any purchases have been um given out basically saying like hey we're not saying it didn't happen and we're not saying it did we're just saying you know it, it, it could not have happened so that could have uh, just to cover them legally, you know, just in case they actually did have some talks of acquisitions, it could have been a bunch of nothing. Who knows? But that's uh, something that came up as another uh, point to there could be some sort of acquisition coming. Also, a couple pointers were given. Uh, uh, Yves Gilmont's son actually left last year uh, from Ubisoft, so there isn't an obvious person to give it to. So Yves might just be like, let me sell my shit and get out of here. You know, yeah. Uh, it will be an interesting thing to see if that happens because if you remember, they did dodge a hostile takeover from Vivendi uh, a couple years ago. Actually, uh, I want to say close to a decade ago now or something like that. Uh, so they they actually just got out of a hostile takeover. So they're quickly going right back into a potential uh, purchase with a giant corporation. So we'll be looking at this closely. And I wrote up a little background on um on these two. BlackRock Inc. is an American investment company. 
To not bore the achievers too much, they're basically an incredibly huge firm that manage things like pensions and own a lot of commercial real estate. So BlackRock themselves have a you total... Mean Blackstone? Sorry, Black... Sorry, yes, Blackstone. Sorry. BlackRock is a, another giant corporation that I got to give you. Why do these have the same name? Sorry. Yeah. BlackRock is a... Uh, is a giant corporation that's buying a lot of um, public lands, and I, they're always in my head because I'm, I don't like them. Yeah, but they're buying a lot of co uh, commercial real estate, totaling assets of around eight hundred and eighty billion dollars. Yeah, I, this is the money that they that they have. That, so this place could just they, they they probably could buy them and not even think. I twice. just don't understand why, like why Blackstone and KKR even are even interested so, in. Ubisoft. So like, pun, pun, companies like this are literally investment companies. So what they do is yeah. they they look, they find a company, and they literally invest in them and try to make money and have like a passive sense of revenue. They're like, hey, how much? We have a shit ton of money, so we're just gonna buy you. Um, here's a lot more money. Uh, make more money, and they, you know, they leave. Yeah, it is weird, right? We're not used to it here. In um, the closest we've gotten, honestly, to like. People like this buying stuff is honestly Tencent and uh, the Prince of yeah. Saudi uh, buying um, SNK. Like that's kind of the closest thing we've gotten, and no one's really talking about that in the games industry. So I don't, and I think this is why not a lot of people are talking about this. Uh, is because it's weird. We're not used to like American giant investment private equity funds coming in and just yeah, like a huge something. marketing firm just buying and it. then just being like hey we bought that goodbye you know i yeah. it, i don't know how they run their business most likely like i said it, it looks like like i was again trying to read all this and i don't fully understand it myself but it looks like they basically literally buy things and have just passive revenue and then they invest it in other things they'll invest it in yeah whatever the recent pump and dump shit is going on and then we yeah. invest a lot of money and print money and then take it and go somewhere else and invest it in a bunch of other stuff and they have pensions for of course um they uh fund pensions with like uh, retirement retirees and things like that so yeah crazy i don't yeah. i didn't expect you to have too much about this Alex. i just wanted to bring it up for the achievers this is crazy stuff uh i hope this doesn't happen because it's very strange to see just a f I mean, relatively foreign company just come out of nowhere and just be like, hey, we bought it at Ubisoft. Um, we don't really care. So that yeah. could that could honestly be a good or bad thing. You know, it just kind of depends on the company. It could be good because they don't care and they just give them a bunch of money and be like, hey, uh, hire on a bunch of people. Stop your uh, 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 stop with the misconduct. It's bad for business. Stop fucking around with people. I mean, they could potentially be like, oh, you know, if they if they did buy them, be like, hey, you're not making us any money. We're, we're just going to close you. Yeah, I mean, that's a... I mean, hey, that's a... That is a version that could happen. That is, of course, a... Uh, a, a doom scenario. I did... I don't remember who said this, but... I did... Uh, I do remember a... Kind of... Not really a saying, but a kind of viewpoint on things like this. So... When I hear about just random companies buying things, companies don't, and the, the, the saying goes like this, companies don't tend to buy things to ruin them. Of course, that's not how, you know, that, that's not how it always no. works. But yeah. my, the point of it is, assumably, first off, these have plenty of money. I doubt they would yeah. even notice if Ubisoft even wasn't even doing that good. Who knows? I, I don't know. I'm talking half out of my ass, honestly, at this point. But what I'm saying is, if they do purchase them, who knows if it's good or bad? And like you said, like would they just buy them in in ten years because they've just been negligent and not helping them because they don't understand video games? Do they just close them? Who knows? Again, I I like to err on the side of positivity and be like, you know, they, hopefully they're spending a lot of money and and they see it as an investment and they want to help it, so they're gonna Adam, give them a lot of money to hire people in, you know, because they are. I wonder losing. how much. I wonder how much they think Ubisoft is worth. It's a great question. Um, I've heard uh, uh, just kind of researching and uh, reading a bunch of stuff. Um, apparently, the Twitter Elon Musk situation has fucked up a lot of stuff. So <laughs> what I mean by that is the amount of money that's being thrown around for Twitter makes everyone else be like, why are they uh, why are they worth so much i mean we we are worth a yeah. lot more money like and, you know and that kind of yeah. that's fucking up a lot of deals that people are like 
Ooh, this isn't good now. <laughs> like they're, yeah. buying, they're you're buying Twitter for a lot of money. Uh, I, as far as I understand, Activision Blizzard kind of did the same situation when you come out and and mention, hey, we're we're buying for tens of billions of dollars. Activision Blizzard. Mm-hmm. Everyone else goes, well, our price just caught tripled. <laughs> like what? We yep. thought we were only worth eight hundred. Maybe we're worth two billion now. I mean, that's pretty big, you know. So. Yeah. Maybe we're worth one tenth of of an Activision Blizzard. Uh, yeah. yeah. So that is a good uh, thing to to bring up. Like, how much is Ubisoft valued? I, I actually don't know. I'm sure there's some mathematician or some sort of asset manager out there that could bare bones be like, all right, you know, they have this much labor, they have this much studios, they have this much product, they have this much annual revenue. Here's their net profit. Here's their market share and all that mm-hmm. stuff. I mean, like that, and of course they have to buy back shares if they're gonna. From MD Daily Record, uh, it says the as of 2021, the company's net worth is approximately 5.4 billion. Or sorry, sorry, 4.5 billion. 4.5 billion dollars. Yep. Yeah, as of 2021. <laughs> That's nothing to BlackRock. So, Blackstone, Jesus. Blackstone. Ah! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> so. Anyways, that's nothing to these companies, so they might just do it just to do it. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. when, when you get to 88 billions in assets, you just, I imagine at that point, you, as an accountant, you just go, I guess we can buy games. I don't know. <laughs> like, like we have a lot of buy. money. <laughs> and also, there is a, we, I, I've talked about it, you've talked about it, I've talked about it a lot. There is a buying frenzy. I don't think we have anywhere near the end of this. The next three years are going... I think in three years, we're not going to see the same industry. I think it's going to be drastically different. Drastically. In major ways that you or I cannot foresee. You ask us a day before the Blizzard Activision came out, we would have said never in a million years. Look where we are now. So, How, how much do you think Disney's worth? Oh my god. I, I don't know. I... F- we're in, they're probably in the mid hundreds of billions, right? Like, hundred and thirty billion. Hundred and thirty billion. Okay, I was way, I was way too high. It's hard to, it's it. Once you get there, I don't. It's hard to even. Mm-hmm. Like, what are numbers when you hit a hundred bit? When you meet, when you hit a singular billion dollars, it's a mm-hmm. hundred million dollars. Like, it's a hundred one million dollars. Like, it's. I don't even understand. Alex. Mm. Moving on to what I had listed as the first thing we would cover in the show. <laughs> so, Sony now has a team focused on game preservation. It seems a Sony employee who accidentally might have left out that a new team over at Sony. And uh, there's a new team at Sony and he probably wasn't supposed to. So Garrett Fredley is the man of the week that seemingly let out via LinkedIn post on his account, which is a post that now... Uh, deleted read this quote today is my first day as a senior build engineer for playstation working as one of their initial hires for the newly created preservation team end quote <laughs> it's what's funny is the whole there's a much longer post that he's so happy and he had to delete it like immediately i'm sure because he's like dude you can't say what you're doing here <laughs> like what are you doing man <laughs> so he's like shit <laughs> oh, oh no it, it sucks his what sucks is it literally says today is my first day <laughs> so on his first day he leaked what he's what he's working on that he probably definitely was not supposed to uh so he got fired that's fucked up alec <laughs> now uh this could mean anything is this a hint at ps1 ps2 further emulation coming to the systems is this finally some sort of team that is working on bringing ps3 native games to be working on a PS5. Who knows? But all we know now is there is a build engineer on a preservation team currently at Sony that today, their first hire, no, not today as of recording, I think it was Tuesday. So, Alex, I give you the question. What do you think this means? Because preservation, broad term. Assumably, assumably, it means PS1, PS2, PS3 games, right? PS4 is already taken care of. You literally don't need to do anything. PS4 is taken care of. You can read all the games. There's like five games in one read. No one cares. PS1, PS2 is honestly sad. The amount of 
games that aren't on PS4 uh, or 5 that could just work there and are being sold there, it's honestly incredibly sad because there's just so many games that should be on the service and that you yeah. should just be able to buy. And then PS3 is still this glaring, glaring, glaring mistake on Sony's side that they still have not figured out. It has been a very long time since the PS3 has come out and they have yet to bring any sort of native compatibility to their current gen systems ps4 and ps5 of course alex Mm. is this finally the time that they will sit down and work on a ps3 native emulator of some sort on ps5 and before you answer that question via moore's law is dead over on the last stand podcast that you should listen to right now it's very good it was recent it was what What'd you just say? I said, via Moore's Law is Dead, okay. which is a YouTuber. Gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. Had a conversation. Like, <laughs> <laughs> By the way, <laughs> Gilbert Goffrey, <laughs> he's dead. He's like, he's been dead for weeks. Um, uh, it's been like a week or two. It's been like a week, yeah. Iago, shout out. Yeah, right. Moore's Law is Dead via a conversation he had. Again, we bring it up again, Colin Moriarty. We, this is like the third time we're on him up today. He's talking so much uh, recently these days. Yeah, he brought is. up that there is a working PS3 emulation on the PS5 at Sony HQ. They just do not. There's something hindering it to the point where they don't want to release it. Apparently, um, I'm gonna butcher it, so you really should listen to that episode. I believe it's on free feeds. Forgive me if it's not. It might be on their Patreon. It's definitely worth, like, I think it's like $5 to listen to it or something. Just just pay for a month. But what I want to bring up, Alex, is apparently Sony does have a small set of games working on a PS5 natively on the system. Uh, For whatever reason, they haven't released it. He cited that it could be it just that's not a satisfying number of games they want to release now it could be that they just don't want to and they don't feel the pressure to uh it's hard to feel pressured when you're the best-selling game every single month sorry the best-selling system so you know why send it out now you're making plenty of money not doing it so who cares yeah but you know so there's a bunch of different ways you can think about it but we do know that they do have a small number of games working on a ps5 it's just the question of Will they ever release that? You know, of course they probably will one day. Are they finally going to? Go it's hard to believe that they. I don't know. It's like if they had, do have it working, like I don't know. It's hard to believe that they actually have it and they just don't want to do it. I feel like they do have issues because I mean, look, look how long it takes. It's taken them, or even I don't even think it's happened yet. For the, why can't you change your name? You can't change your name. You can or cannot? I don't know. You can, you can, you can. You can. Yeah, yeah, that happened now. a while ago, but you're right. Yeah. That, was a, that was an example like, that of was, Sony that taking a, a very long time to do something pretty s- simple. Simple is not the word I'll use because mm. they shot themselves in the foot with the way, the way they originally made it. Okay. But, you know, let's say easy just because it's, a, 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 you know, it's an easy way of saying it. But yeah, it, a seemingly easy thing, it took yeah. them that long. Apparently the the original problem was um I'll, I'll butcher this but they tied what you made your ID to the trophies and purchases so on their server so yeah you, once you, you link the trophies to something is you yeah, can't change like, your name cuz it's linked to that well yeah like and apparently if you changed it your purchases could go away like games that you bought so they were like they could they could never figure out how to do it Microsoft the reason that wasn't um a, an issue is you have a display and then you have your actual name uh, like mm-hmm. invisible in the Microsoft servers that will yeah. never change or something like you have an ID basically it's like you know feet five seven thousand billion seven is like mine for you instance. know it's cr- it's weird because you would think they would use similar like algorithms for that or like it was or it was that. it was early though alex you know remember it's easy to say that now but 2009 
when like trophies and they were starting to get the PSN going. Like, remember yeah. they had the P- they had the PlayStation Store on a fucking web browser back then, man. Like, they did not have the best web engineers on their side, especially when it came to their own network. So I do think uh, I do think they just ha- I think, and I don't know why because Sony Maybe. can afford it. They just seem to not have. And you know I don't you know I don't mean to disparage I don't <laughs> I don't mean to disparage the people working on the team but it, it doesn't it no, seems sure. like they don't it's have just... a hugely talented engineering software team. Um, I don't know why. I mean, Microsoft is the leading software in the world, so you know it's kind of an unfair comparison. But like Microsoft is like leagues and bounds ahead of them in multiple areas. PlayStation is catching up now, but. They were leagues and bouts ahead of them in, for a long time, and they're just now kind of catching up. It's 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 strange. It's strange. And so I do agree with you in several points that you brought up. But yeah, I yeah I wanted to bring bring that up as well. It, it, there are some strange things with with this seeming engineer. Now they could be fixing it now. They you know they could be fixing it, and it could all change in a matter of a few years. But it's it took this long it's 2022 that that system launched in like 2008 so it's, it, it maybe they'll finally fix it maybe anything you want to leave the audience with with game preservation mm. is there one singular game you want to bring i can't think of one i really just infamous honestly i, I think that's really really the only game i want on the ps5 yeah, I, infamous and i, I want um to try resistance because i've never played them yeah, I really want to play them and not having like even playing the PlayStation now right now it's it's so like tedious. Like why make it this tedious to do this? Like um god, what is it? It's, it's like it when you start streaming it, you have to, it to you have to hit the both buttons to make it look like a PS3 and then it's it's like it takes forever to load because the streaming it's just weird. Like why can't I just do a digital download? Like PS like it's it's weird because PS3 was able you were able to download PS1 and PS2 games were you? Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. You were able to download those. Why couldn't an older system be able to do that and not the newer system? I don't know. Yeah, apparently core processing just this fucks them up like, royally. They did, something with, they did something with the PS3 game. And like, wait, like, even PS5, like, you, like you could download PS2 games because they brought them. Mm-hmm. I don't remember. Very can few, but PS1 you can. More? Can you, do, can you, you can't do PS1 yet, right? I mean, you can buy a few, I believe. Can you? Yeah, PS4? there's some on PS Now that oh, you okay. stream. Mm. I don't believe you can download um, any of them. I think you okay. can stream them. It's just, it's just weird, but, um, you know... No, it's very strange. I wish uh, I wish they would fix this. I uh, this has a similar complaint I have with Switch. Look, I love the. I will still pay for. Technically, I don't pay for. It. I I pay with you with it, but you know mm-hmm. I'd still pay for Switch online. Yeah, but let me buy the games. Why do I have to have this fucking service? Just yeah. let me buy them too. Like it's just annoying. Let me buy the virtual console games. What? Why you let me on Wii and Wii U? So why? Why can't I now? And I know why. Is because we'll own it forever. That's why. So they don't want you to do that. If you yep. if you buy Super Mario Three on Switch, we now have the expectation that that game is going to be with me forever. And they don't want to do that. They're like, oh, yeah, we, we want to keep making money off these games and keep re-releasing them. So we're gonna just not let you buy them ever. Yep, S- sucks. I wish annoying, we could. Yeah. I wish we could invoke change, but none of us have the patience for it. Yeah, it's like I mean, that's why I like a Game Pass with Xbox. They they still let you play buy the games because it's like there are certain games where like I've bought and that I have through Game Pass, but I buy the, buy them to get the license because I wanted to support the you know those games. Yep. Like I mean, I didn't own uh I didn't I didn't own Sekiro. Uh, you did, but we game share. I bought it because I really enjoy the game from FromSoft. So I was like, you know what? I want to own this game. So I bought it. So it's just weird. Indeed. Time Game Trials was kind of broad in a bit uh, more the week. There's an update to this I'll read at the end as well. Staying with PlayStation, we have a look at how they're handling the new requirement for game trials on their new PlayStation Plus service. It seems PlayStation will be requiring devs who have had their game set wholesale to about 34 USD 
will have to have a trial version of at least two hours long. Anything lower than the 34 USD wholesale will not be required to have a game trial. Devs will have a window of three months to release a game trial of their game within the um, uh, launch of their actual game. So they have three months from the game debuting on the store to add a trial to it. Also, devs can release their own custom demo rather than a time tri uh, trial, but Sony says this will have to be approved on a case-on-case -case basis, which I, f I find incredibly hard to believe. There's just no way they're going to do that. I, I highly doubt that they will literally sit there and play a demo for two hours every time and be like, yep, this is the, this is the one I, I think it is. No, no, no. I doubt that. So it, most likely, if, if, if they know you, you just release a custom demo, they don't care. Yeah. Alex, this... Honestly, stirred a hubbubaloo. Honestly, mostly annoying people just honestly being console warrior annoying fucks and really just making fun of PlayStation about this. I honestly just do not engage with that type of commentary just because it's so, so annoying. So yeah. kind of ignoring uh, that whole aspect of this entire conversation that was ruled out for almost a week of people talking about this very small feature. What do you think of, of, of the requirement that devs will have to have a trial version? It's, I mean, I don't, I don't know, like, why? Like, why? Like, I don't understand. Like, it to me, in my, in my, when I, when I read that, it made me feel like, so are you putting a, you, we're putting a trial in every game you're making and that comes out on the ps on the for i'm assuming, I'm assuming every game that comes out on the playstation store is gonna have you know, anything what was as it as long anything as it's that's... wholesale 34 dollars. so wholesale means if i remember correctly what you're gonna sell it plus the profit margin so sale plus profit margin equals your wholesale okay so it has to be at least 34 dollars yeah, think about that. Way. Right, so, assuming anything, le any any game that's less than that won't have one. Basically, yeah. So, if you're less than thirty bucks, basically, you don't have to have a trial. It's it's like I, it's just weird that they're even doing that because I, are you saying that if it that it's requiring a game trial so people could try it to to show you that the game is worth it? Like, sh like it's just I feel like it's just so, like they're not. Uh, like they're putting a game trial in the game because they're not sure of the game. Uh, they're they're unsure if the game is is gonna sell. So they're like, here, try it out. So you you'll like it. Don't worry. Here's here's a demo. So uh, I'm not even really caught up on that. I'm caught up in why is this a requirement for PlayStation Plus Premium? Chiefers, if you don't know, that's the highest cost for subscription. So you're paying for premium for to be able to play game trials. That's, I think, the, I think that's the strangest I, yeah, thing. I, yeah, that's true. Like, why? Like, so, like, if I have just a regular PlayStation Plus Essential, so you're you saying... Just, you don't get the game trial. I, yeah, I don't get the game trials. Like, whoa. Very strange. I don't know why it's behind the highest paid system uh, service. You, it would make a little more sense in at least the middle, right? Why is it in the highest tier? Maybe it's just to pad on things because they want you on the third tier. But I, I just wanted to bring that out. That was honestly one of the stranger things. I have no I problem think, with. Go ahead. I was gonna. Sorry, I was gonna say. I think they're. Tr I think this is trying to kind of go because, like, you know, everybody's like, "Oh, you know, what's their counteract for game, game, uh, game pass?" I think this kind, this the game trial thing is kind of going against EA Play because the EA Play has a ten hour trial thing that you have. And that's included in Game Pass as well, so I'm wondering if that's even to do would do with any of it. Sure, I don't like, disagree. I, don't, I, don't I guess, but I, I I would highly I don't know I would highly doubt they honestly care about EA Play. Does anyone? You know, like I think they just added it as just a an, honestly just another thing you can you can put on like you got already picture in your head, Alex, like. Plus, this is plus essential. This is extra. This is premium. Like, it's just another bullet point you can add to, like, your little subscription, just, like, roundabout it's just thing. It's weird. Do you, do you think it's going to affect developers in any way for this? Do you think it's going to make, like, do you think it's going to it's gonna be out of their way to do it? And we're so like, I, man, now we got to do this. I, so I, I read 
that a lot of people are actually bringing that up. I was reading a couple articles and they actually brought up that maybe small developers would have an issue because now they have to now devote time. And that's actually I'm the update. Pro- that's actually the update uh, I gave to the to the thing. Apparently, PlayStation is going to have a team to help devs with this. Whatever that means. I mean, there's a lot of games that come out every single yeah. week. So you're telling me you have a team that's going to help every single game like, that's over like thirty dollars. Time. So w- apparently, now Steam already apparently does trials, but I believe it's different. I think you buy the game and you can return it as long as you've not played over an hour. Played- so. I- <sighs> And two hours or something like that? i think it's two hours i don't it's somewhere along the line that yeah so like i feel like you could just do that right but then that yeah. would probably require you to do a whole other subset of, well, they of changes wanna, and, they, playstation doesn't even like it when you want to try to do a, ref, a refund no like they do not like they like not. um like my daughter accidentally bought a game when I was playing on uh, when I was on there, and she mm-hmm. accidentally hit it. I literally called them, be like, "Hey, my daughter is two. Accidentally hit a button." They're like, "Uh, we don't really do this. We don't want to return it." I literally haven't even downloaded this game, and you're telling me you can't return my money? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's like uh, they have an issue with re- doing refunds out in general. Wow. Yeah, that's a bit of a mess. You'd think they'd just return it. Do it. Yeah. Like, is it that big a deal? Like, like you, you can even tell they can tell it says it hasn't even been downloaded or even played at all mm-hmm. but they don't they're like eh, we'll do it this once they they have a one time policy did you yeah, yeah. Uh, i was about to say I something like, very cool. graphic well, I'm glad. i was about to say something very graphic but yeah that that's yeah that that it's very very strange in a lot of reasons anyways do i think it's going to add dev time I don't I don't know the specifics of game development. I imagine cutting a slice out of an hour of your game can't be that bad. Again, not a dev, so I can't. I mean, I can't. it's just it's just weird because like imagine okay, oh, God of War Ragnarok's come out and if well, you know, you get to play the first 2 hours of the game, I'm why can't I just wait for the game? I mean, like this is this is not going to carry over. What's the point? Maybe it will. I don't know. But it's a time. It's technically called a time trial. So, assumably, you can play it and then just restart your your progress when you buy the game. Mm-hmm. Unless it's a custom game demo, then you're just playing a slice of whatever they want you to play. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know what to make of this. I don't really care because I'm so educated on games now that I, I rarely am going to a game and I don't know about it. So yeah. this won't affect me. I know there's a lot of chiefers out there that they probably are happy about this because, because yeah, I get to try it. So I, when I buy it, like I don't regret buying it because they don't, if they're not going to let you return it, they at least have this option. But the problem is it's behind the highest subscription costs. Why? <laughs> why is it just not at least in the middle one? It's weird that it's yeah. not in the essential one either. Like why is it's, yeah, it's, it's weird that it's not available for everybody. And, then, and also it's weird. Wouldn't to t- you want everybody to try out your game so then they can, if they like it, they can play, buy it? Well, it's like, even stranger is why, why is it in the premium? Like what's the justification? Is it because your top subscribers should only be able to try out the game or something what is the it's just a what what, it, what would be the justification because i imagine you'd want this in your essentials so you don't have the return issue right i think I'm, I'm wondering if maybe the people who would have the premium are only the people who are the hardcore fans and maybe they think that we're the only ones who care up for it maybe that's not a terrible I, I idea i guess but no, no, who anybody who cares for demos is going to be in this one. Honestly, I I don't care for the demos to be honest. No, I don't either. I used, I used to. to be a big, really big demo guy. I used I to because I couldn't afford to buy games, but now exactly. I just, yeah. if I want the game, I get it. I, I just buy the game. It's not a problem. I, I don't. Well, even then, I mean, like I only buy games that I know. I'm if I don't if I don't know about a game, I'm just gonna look it up. Yeah, I'm just gonna like literally YouTube it and be like, oh, let me look at the gameplay. That is true. The game demos and trials are of the past, just because now you just look at a YouTube video and you'll kind of get what the game yeah. is, right? Just I, gameplay I, video, and let me see. Oh, if this is a strategy game. I don't know. I can maybe pr- I'll try it one day. That's yeah, it. I can probably tell you if I'll like a game by literally a single minute, minute of yeah. a video, like one minute exactly. of a single video. I can tell you, like, yeah, I'll probably like that or not. So. Very interesting um, discussions. Uh, Achievers, remember, this is a conversation with you guys as well. Let us know what you think about this. Is this something you're excited about? Again, I think this is a fine idea. It's just strange that it's behind the highest tier cost. The highest tier, yeah. So, 
Let us know what you think. Let's see here. Sticking with kind of financial things. Mm. Amazon reportedly is going to drastically change their contract with Twitch streamers of their highest caliber. This comes from a Bloomberg article stating that the changes could be coming as, uh, to this streaming service to help boost the process of both Twitch and Amazon. Of course, Amazon purchasing Twitch. Changes could be coming this summer with the changes ranging from the profit split coming from um, uh, 70% to 50%. So originally, uh, they, uh, the uh, cut was 70-30. It will be dropped to 50-50, of course, between the two. So you're getting a, a profit cut. And apparently to alleviate these changes, they also may release the exclusivity requirement they have with the Twitch partner. So basically, there's there's a regular person that streams that can't make any money until they have a certain amount of viewers. Then they become a Twitch affiliate, which means like people can finally start um, subscribing to you and things. Mm. And then there's one above that, which is like Twitch partner, where you can like start getting ads and you can have uh things in the back end that help you make money like there's a board that will that, i think it's called twitch bounties where uh like let's say overwatch 2 since that has a pvp mode that uh, uh since overwatch 2 has their beta going on right now let's say there's a bounty board for playing for five hours and you'll get fifty dollars you know that's an example of like something a partner could get yeah so they could be actually releasing the requirement that those partners will have an exclusivity deal so they could just go to YouTube Gaming, which again is like the only other option you have unless you want to go to OnlyFans. Um, to help the decision go down a bit easier, they might let you go anywhere you want. Uh, and as a reminder, Amazon was purchased by uh, Amazon purchased Twitch in 2014 for $970 million. More changes could be coming. Some employees were citing me mental health concerns for some of the uh, top. Um, uh, Twitch partners saying that they wanted a uh, feature where maybe you could pause subscriptions if you wanted to go on vacation so they wouldn't lose subs so they could pause it for maybe a week or two and reactivate when they come back or something. Alex, mm. a giant change could be coming to Twitch as a platform. Uh, very strange. What is going on? You think... Um, Apparently, Twitch cited a bunch of reasons. They wanted to maximize profits to make it more sustainable, which, to be honest, hard to believe, because mm. it's Amazon. I highly doubt uh, your issues is making money. Maybe it is. Well, Who knows? A, a lot of people, I mean, a lot of, a lot of their big people left to YouTube, uh, YouTube Gaming, have, weren't they? Didn't they? Uh, I mean, who's big? I mean, they have Ninja. They have... Uh, I guess Valkyrie left. Yeah, I mean, a good bit of people did leave for YouTube gaming. Well, Valkyrie but left, and then um, Courage, uh, Tim the Tatman, the they all left. So, I mean, they did lo lose a bunch of big people, but, I mean, did they... I don't know. They probably did notice a, 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 a drop, but, I mean, they have a lot of people on Twitch. So, I can't imagine yep. them really noticing that huge a deal. Now, dropping to 50-50 and adding even more ads on top, that was actually another thing that may be changing, incentivize even more ads on top of the ones they have now. Which, by the way, they, they, they can get relentless with the ads if you're not subscribed to the channel. It can get annoying. Mm -hmm. So Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. They, we're talking, like, there was one time that they, uh, there were seven ads all for 30 seconds. So, mm -hmm. like, that's a lot of ads to sit through for a Twitch stream where I can literally just jump to someone else. So, it's yeah. just a strange... Uh, way of trying to get ad revenue i don't personally care about ads too too much only because i don't use twitch that much so i'm only yeah. kind of passively listening to twitch so i'm not staying on it too too much it's usually only when something like for instance the overwatch thing happens i go and check out the gameplay when people are playing it or they have some sort of drop system going on like they did with overwatch 2 and you know you get incentivized for watching the content and things of that nature so are you getting weird like there's been a lot of these ASMR videos popping up on Twitch lately. I, I imagine they do very well. That's probably why. It's weird. Yeah, server on the front page, man. Once you get the server on the front page, it's a lot of money. All you hear is... <laughs> I'm like, stop it. It's uh, weird. I, 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 it's, just, it's just getting a dill pickle and just crunch, 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 crunch. <laughs> crunch, it's weird, crunch, 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 crunch. I, I was trying to, it, it just popped up and I was like, what the hell is this? And all I see is somebody going, 
like just licking all over the whatever they got and i'm like Stop. <laughs> you said whatever they got you're like i can't i don't want to know it's, what it it's is some weird, it's some weird machine i don't know like, <laughs> just licking all over it i'm like this is weird uh, oh my it's, god like, yeah where's, where's, where's Overwatch 2? It's, it's like, you know what i want to watch an asmr for oh god what? video game guides this is the ASMR video game guide for like Kingdom Hearts 2 and they're sitting there like reading like the video game guide like this. No tip. <laughs> there are <laughs> blank orculums in this part. <laughs> it's gonna be an orculum. Over on the side here. And all you hear is <laughs> all you hear is the turn page. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're gonna need to go back to Lion King. <laughs> <laughs> Donald, yeah, I, yeah, it's, know, it's weird. Yeah, it's definitely it's been a lot of those lately, and it's just weird. They say it's, it's like they're they're just progressively getting more and more of those are becoming, and maybe that's why they're trying to change things. Ch change things? I don't know. Who knows? They they cited needing more money, and I just can't. It's half gaming and half only fans at this point. <laughs> I can't fathom the the need for more money. I just can't. So I mean, yeah. uh, there has to be another reason. Okay. Activision Blizzard gave a statement for financials, and they highlight I highlighted some things that I wanted to quickly go over. So there's going to be a new free to play Warzone experience. We all knew this, but this is coming from the horse's mouth, which is built from the ground up alongside the premium game, featuring groundbreaking innovations to be revealed later this year. Of course, that game, Modern, uh, Modern Warfare. 2019 sequel uh they quote said the most advanced experience in franchise history whatever that means uh blizzard's team is currently working on a lot of major content for world of warcraft including world of warcraft dragonflight um the new expansion and world of warcraft wrath of the lich king classic for world of warcraft classic which is like the original launch stuff i think and then like yeah. bring back all the other stuff Blizzard is also planning to unveil more details about its first World of Warcraft mobile experience in the coming weeks, which, if you remember, are the two previous games from Jason Schreier, the, the Clash of Clans-like game, and the Pokemon Go-like World of Warcraft game. So, two games incoming. Also, as a reminder, Dia Diablo Immortal will be launching June 2nd of 2022. Finally. You know how long it's been since they announced Immortal? That, we haven't heard nothing about it? Finally is not the word I'd use. I'd be... My, my word is whatever what yeah <laughs> whatever in a strange turn of events we got a confirmation via gearbox and 2k on twitter saying an all new tales from the borderland is coming in 2022 okay it was random i'm excited but it was very strange just to get a random tweet of a picture of of a uh, of like a vault uh thing and it was just yeah. like new tales is coming it's like all right cool can't wait Alex, you played Tales. No. <gasps> Alex, play Tales from Borderland. It is really good. Me too. I just, I, yeah, I never. It's my favorite Telltale game, probably. Yeah. It'd be between that and Walking Dead Season 1 and Wolf Among Us. Like, like between those three. I, I don't know which one, but it's really good. Yeah, I've, no, yeah, I, I, I've yet to play it. PlayStation has announced the updates for the new PS Plus tiers and when they'll start rolling out. And of course, it's date updates. Sorry, I didn't say that. I think I think I forgot. Asian markets May twenty third, Japan June first, Americas June thirteenth, Europe June twenty second. Those are when all those PS Plus years are coming to your markets. This is a this isn't technically a date update, but it is. Ubisoft also did a weird thing where they tweeted out uh, they they have a new battle arena game coming, uh, which is just another battle royale. Uh, it's called Codename Project Q. This is a team battle arena letting players tr uh, truly own the experience. This is via the Twitter. The game is in early development and we'll keep testing. So for now, all you can do is register for upcoming tests. So if you want to, you can head over to Ubisoft and register for Project Q because uh, uh, they didn't learn their lesson. That's why. Because they didn't learn their lesson. Uh, May's monthly game for PS Plus is as follows. Your PS4, PS5 game of the month is FIFA 22. And another PS4, PS5 game, Tribes of Midgar, and a PS4 game, Curse of the Dead Gods. Those are your three PlayStation Plus games. Ooh. Now, I always do this. I double check and make sure mm -hmm. Games with Gold has not been announced. Let's see. Yeah, I've been wanting to try Tribes of Midgard. I do too. I'm actually very excited for those. So mm -hmm. I do want to play it. It looks like it has not been announced. 
Oh, wait. Wait. It has. I was about to say, yeah, it has. NBA 2K22 is on the game, is on Game Pass. I know that. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. They will be released. The, we'll announce it May 1st. Why? Why not before? I don't know. That's what this says. Oh, there's pre- there's uh, somebody who's predicting uh, that it's going to be Marvel's Avengers, Gods Will Fall, Portal 2, and Limbo. That's what they're that's what the prediction is. But so oddly what. specific. <laughs> Do they have Very. anything backing it up, or are they literally just see. guessing? Uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, the website is it's serious gaming. Oh God, serious gaming. Woo! Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Who would have forgotten? Why did it, uh, why are these four? I don't understand. No, uh, who knows? Maybe he's got some linked information. Maybe he is literally guessing. Who knows? But hey, those are your four games. Maybe for games with gold. Now, did I forget Game Pass games? I feel like I did. Maybe. Pretty sure I did these. Seven Days to Die, console PC, April 26th. Research and Destroy, console and PC, April 26th. Bug Snacks, April 28th. Unsold, unsold, April 28th. Those are four games coming to... Uh, those first three are, are cloud and PC. Unsold is only console. And those are the dates for you. Uh, oh, and then, we yes, we have the beginning for, for May. So, oh my god, I can't wait for this. So, Loot River co- console, May 3rd. Citizen Sleeper on console, May 5th. Trek to Yomi, May 5th. Cloud, co- co- uh, con- Jesus. Console and PC. You're too excited. Euden <laughs> Chronicle Rising. May 10th. Whew. Whew. Achievers, if you I, I watched the trailer for it again, and it... it I'm definitely going to try it. Oh, yeah, it Achievers, looks, it looks if good. you got. Suikin and Creators are making Unit and Chronicles. Ooh. Headspace Shipbreaker PC, May 24th. Sniper Elite 5, Console and PC, May 26th. Pac-Man Ooh, Museum good. Plus, Console and PC, May 27th. I'm going to try Trek to Yomi. Me too. I cannot wait. Yep, right now I'm playing Lost in Random. Very good game so far. Speaking of what you've been playing, Alex, I end the show just like I began it with a single question. But before I ask you that question, remember, you've made it all the way to the end of the show, and we want to thank you for your viewership and listenership. We thank you so much. If you want to go the extra mile, you can, of course, like, comment, subscribe on the YouTube video that you're watching right now. Or if you're on a podcast service of your choice, you can be on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, Pocket, uh, Pocket Casts, anything of the sort. Five star review. Let's give us a nice review. That helps the algorithms. Thank you so much for listening again. And if you want to support us financially, patreon.com slash easy achievers. We can sh- throw a couple bucks. Those go a very long way, and we thank everyone over there. Alex. Hmm. What do you have queued up for the week? Now, of course, queued up is pretty simple. This could be a game, a video game, some sort of board game, maybe a TV show, a movie. Maybe a book, a comic book. What do you have queued up for the week? This could be any sorts. This isn't only for Alex. This is, of course, for the Achievers. Let us know what you want queued up for the week. Is there a certain game or comic or a book that you just can't wait to get back to? Let us know. Alex, what do you have queued up for the week? So I'm still on. I'm still on the on the path of my FromSoft replays, uh, just because I'm still in that type of Soulsborne, Souls-like game mode mood. Uh, I beat Could Sekiro, you say like a... that they have your soul? I mean, they have my soul plenty of times. The amount of times I've died. Nice. Um, but I was debating whether to go to De- Demon Souls. I'm not doing Bloodborne because I'm waiting for the day, man, where they announce it, and I want to keep. I want to keep Bloodborne for that remaster. Yeah, you want to be like th- th- frothing for fresh. it. Fresh. Yeah, yes. I want to be fresh for it again. Um. So I started Lost in Random. Surprisingly, it has a, a kind of a Souls-like mechanics, and I kind of like, and I really like it. Okay. I explained it to you yesterday. I just the way I explained it for uh, for him achievers was it's think about a cartoony ter- Tim Burton Little Nightmares like Souls game 
it, it's it's weird and, and it has like a, it had so many different mechanics that like it's hard to explain all at once but like when you play it it makes sense and it's the story is cool it's everything's pretty cool um but i'm gonna play that uh or I keep playing that and i actually picked up the neo collection because i want to give that a shot neo Yes, play them. I'm gonna try those because I've heard interesting things about those, and I'm still, I still kind of want to be a, you know, samurai. Um, technically, I was a shinobi in Sekiro, but, um, but I'm still, I'm still wanting that atmosphere, and I almost went back to Ghost of Tsushima because I was still feeling that atmosphere. So I almost went back to that because uh, my save screwed me over. I had that platinum, so I have to like go back and redo all that. They did, they did. Your PS5 was murdered viciously by God by himself. Lightning. Yeah, God himself decided, nay, oh, but... nay, and then he threw the lightning bolt. Is it God or yeah. Zeus? I don't know. It's I, mean, I would say I would say Zeus, but I like Thor better. I'm more of a I'm more of a Norse guy myself, so. Alex, thank you so much for asking what I have queued up. I actually have Suikin and 5 that I need to finish. I'm very close. I have about 40 plus hours, 50-ish hours into this game. Yeah. I am obsessively playing this game because it's one of my favorite, if not my favorite game of all time. I'm currently going through that. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to finish it with 108 Stars of Destiny. No, mm-hmm. you know, humble brag there. Can't wait. I actually get a different ending I read. I don't know what this ending is. Alex, if you, so basically, mm-hmm. so basically there's technically there's like seven endings to this game there's a okay. handful of bad quote-unquote endings there is like good ending a b c kind of uh yeah. and it's all uh it's all connected to how many stars of destinies that you have meaning how many people you recruited throughout the game so like okay. if you have a kind of relatively low you get one ending if you have a relatively middle you kind of get a, an ending and then if you have all of them you get i guess what is technically the canon best ending and i can't wait to see it okay i mean i mean i'm i'm looking forward to hearing uh like like the, your reaction when mm-hmm. you play, when you talk, when you call me i'll be crying probably cuz it's a very emotional end so is i it- yeah, it ends very emotional. It's very sad, but uh, yeah. it's it's bittersweet kind of. You know, it's it's sad, but there's nice things that happen. So, uh, yeah. I will I will probably call you sobbing and being like, "Oh my god, the giant snake and the turtle died," or something of that nature. Yeah, Alex. Anything else? Um, I want to play this weekend one. I, I mentioned that at the beginning yeah. of the show. I know there's some shows I'm blanking on that me and Rebecca want to watch. The wife, of course. Oh, Alex, you might like this. I want to go watch The Northman. Did you see this? Did you hear about this? So, yes, I did hear about it. I really want to watch that. I, do, I, I really want to watch it. The, the problem Same. is our movie theaters are literally the worst thing, period. They're oh, awful. Yeah, our all movie theaters are terrible. They're terrible. Awful. All of them. So, it's either go watch it on a drive-in which I don't hate. It's just no, it gets sure. old after a while. Or mm. I go and wait till it comes to digital, which is probably what's going to happen. Let's, let's be honest here. Yeah. Probably just going to wait till it comes out. I buy it and I watch it and I have a great time at my house. Like the yep. recluse spider I am. Other than that, Alex, that's pretty much all I have queued up for the week. I have that. I finished all my animes. So, you know, I'm pretty much done with my animes. I'm going to be probably looking for some sort of show to dive into. Uh, okay. so I can start watching. But aside from that, Alex, that's all I have queued up. Thank you for asking. Though. Yeah, I'm st- I, st- I got a bit. I got to finish Vinland Saga. That's a really good show so far. Yeah, the anime. I remember that. I remember yes, you said very, you were watching that. Yes, very, very. Good You're finishing good up show. the Batman. I watched that. That was great. Yep, that was finishing a that up. Great movie. I loved that one. Second favorite Batman movie, of course, behind Dark Knight. Of course. Achievers. We're sitting at an hour and fifty three minutes. This is. Possibly the longest podcast we've ever recorded. I, I think it's close. I think we actually did a two-hour one once. I'm not so. entirely sure, but we're pretty close. So I'm pretty happy it's about that. We pretty had a, close. Yeah, we're we had a very deep show for you today, and I'm very happy with the conversations we had. So thank you so much for sticking with us for so long. I had a great time. Alex, yes, thank you again for joining me. We are gonna go play some more video games, but until the next time, go cheap. Go chief.